So we have uh, met the first fantasy author, George MacDonald, but still the fantasy genre as we know it isn't really developed. There are fantastic stories and they are mainly being published in uh, pulp magazines, um, what in Sweden we would call it Choskliteratur. So that was one of the main entertainments for people in the US and the UK uh, during the first half of the 20th century before, you know, television and inter internet and great stuff like that. Uh, so the magazines were printed on cheap paper, so they weren't expensive to buy. Many people could afford them. And in these magazines you would you would find stories, uh, detective stories, crime stories, horror, science fiction, fantasy, basically all the good stuff. So in these kind of magazines and in cheap paperback books is basically where we find fantasy until J.R.R. Tolkien. So Tolkien was an Oxford professor in England. Uh, he published uh, his Lord of the Rings trilogy in the middle of 1950s. Uh, and it is, you know, soaked with literary <laughs> inspiration from all the folklore and Celtic mythology and Icelandic mythology and, and the stuff that we looked at uh, in the previous part of this talk. Uh, and he was also, you know, a, a linguistic and he invented, as you well may know, after seeing the movies also, uh, several languages of his own. So Tolkien was really, you know, really a master in, in creating all this uh, background and, and creating his Middle Earth, his secondary world. But the books weren't really super popular in England at the time, uh, and it would take uh, another 10 years before they were published in the US in a, actually a pirate <laughs> paperback edition, and copyright laws were so-so at this time. Uh, but in the middle of the 1960s in the US, the Lord of the Rings trilogy was a huge hit. Uh, and if we look at the countries at the time, um, England was, you know, very much scarred after the Second World War, uh, and, and uh, people maybe weren't that interested in supernatural stuff. Whereas in US, you know, things went kind of well com comparatively. Uh, and in the 1960s, there was this flower power movement among the young people, the students, and that's where the Lord of the Rings sort of just exploded and was a huge hit. Um, Tolkien was also, as you uh, may know, friends with C.S. Lewis, who was the guy who wrote the Narnia books. Uh, and they had a sort of writer's circle called the Inklings, who used to have, uh, and they used to have meetings at a pub in Oxford. Uh, and you can still go there. It's quite amazing to imagine the kind of conversations that took place there. Uh, so that's, uh, you know, Tolkien sort of very much defined fantasy as we know it. Uh, and, and this is really where we can see the genre developing more to what we recognize today, I think. Uh, and during, you know, the 60s and 70s, uh, the genre, of course, developed a lot, more writers. Uh, and during the 80s and the 19s, uh, it became quite lucrative to write fantasy. Several authors, you know, topped the best-selling lists uh, constantly with their series. For instance, Robert Jordan and David Eddings. Uh, and um, and I think probably a, a more modern development, we can see that there's a lot of uh, female authors now as compared to maybe in the beginning of the genre, it was kind of dominated by males. And hopefully, I, I think we will see a movement to also move from just, you know, the American and the British fantasy and, and see more uh, what kind of fantasy is being written around the world, because it's been very much dominated by, by the US and the UK mainly. Um, and also just, you know, um, to, to, to say that Tolkien defined the fantasy genre with his book, but also I think uh, if you see the Lord of the Rings movies uh, and if you compare fantasy movies before and after uh, those, I think there's actually been a second sort of <laughs> revolution. And I, and I find it hard to see that a uh, very high budget a uh, budgeted TV show like uh, Game of Thrones could have been made if the Lord of the Rings movies hasn't, hadn't, you know, been as, as good and uh, well made as they were. So that's probably a second revolution for, for fantasy. And um, obviously also when you talk about fantasy, it's hard to see just the books, even if in this talk I'm talking about the literary genre of fantasy, because fantasy is so much more. It's, you know, an entire culture with, uh, you know, computer games and role playing games and uh, uh, reenactment and live role-playing games and uh, uh, movies, uh, fan scenes, uh, fan art, uh, 
uh, etc. <laughs> so it's you know it's an, an, an entire culture of, of fantasy. Uh, if we look at the different type of types of fantasy, probably as I've already mentioned, the, the most famous is the, the the high fantasy, which is very much defined by Tolkien's way of writing, uh, and. Uh, Today, you could also place George R. R. Martin, the author of Game of Thrones series, in, in the high fantasy genre. Uh, but there are also other types. We've mentioned the Arthurian type, which deals with the King Arthur myths. Uh, there is comic fantasy. The main sort of uh, representing that uh, genre is Terry Pratchett, who, who writes very humorous uh, fantasy in which he makes fun of... Uh, both fantasy stereotypes, but also our entire society. It's so much fun. Um, a more modern type of fantasy is the urban type, which uh, often takes place in, in our reality, a modern setting, an urban setting in the cities or such like, and then, you know, brings supernatural elements into this. One of the, uh, one of the uh, early books in this genre it was War for, War for the Oaks, uh, and also Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman was kind of early and has been sort of defining that type of fantasy for a while. Um, you can have uh, romantic fantasy, supernatural romances. There's been a lot of those going on. I think probably the last year you have all the, for instance, the vampire series, Vampire Diaries and, and Twilight and, and Vampire Academy and, and, and series like that. Um, so supernatural romance is often a lot like urban fantasy, but with much focus laid on the, the love story, not seldom a love triangle. Uh, and there's also uh, a subgenre called sword and sorcery, uh, which is, in my opinion, very much defined by Conan the Barbarian. Um, a lot of focus on, you know, big, dark, brooding heroes with great swords and a lot of battle and, and blood. Uh, to, to simplify it a bit. So that's also, you know, a, a couple of examples of subgenres within fantasy. So um, this was basically all from me. Uh, thanks for listening. Bye.